Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Nuremic, and welcome back to Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. This is the second video ever that I have made on this game. We're gonna jump straight into it. I am recording this at 1.45 in the afternoon. However, uh, because I'm using an emulator, uh, I'll get into how I recorded the first one, because I never mentioned it. Uh, again, this video is going to be long. It's gonna, it's gonna be in multiple parts as well. But, you know, welcome back. Uh, Animal Crossing New Horizons releases in six days. And this is the game that's been kind of ticking Animal Crossing fans over since late 2017. Um, I wanted to come back to this game and kind of make a parting kind of... A uh, kind of farewell video, I suppose. Because, in all honesty, this game uh, is not as bad for me as everyone else says it is. And, yeah, so... I forgot they made everything kind of one catch because of the event that's on currently. Again, we're going to split this up, but I want to do the initial intro now. Uh, we, we could catch some fish in the river, actually, and we'll, we'll do the same around town. But this game has changed so much since my original video on it on November 1st, 2017. Which, yes, it's been that long. It's been two years, five months, and 13 days. Which is mind-blowing, I know. Um, I remember them announcing a Animal Crossing Direct, and then later that day, it came out online that they'd kind of done a soft launch in, uh, whatever you'd call it, Australia even. And, yeah, I remember being over the moon. Now, as you can see, uh, I'll leave a link to the original video in the description so you can go back and look at how this map used to look. Um, obviously, the same old things are here. We've got OK Motors, uh, where you customise your camper. I've fully paid off my campo within the first month of this game being out. And as you can see, I've got a bunch of bells that I don't know what to do with. Uh, we've still got Breezy Hollow, where you get a bunch of your fruit. You've still got Saltwater Shores, where you would go fishing for ocean fish. You would still have Sunburst Island, where you'd go catch bugs. And you still have Lost Law Creek, where I am at currently, where you would go and catch river fish. And, of course, you've also got Marketplace, where you'd buy so assorted items. And you've got Shovel Strike Quarry. Now, since this game came out, I'm gonna head to Sunburst Island actually, because I have got some honey I want to use. I have recently started getting back into this game in the lead up to New Horizons, because there is gonna be a crossover event. There is currently the crossover event going on here. Now, for those of you wondering what has changed here, I need to stop clicking out my screen. Uh, not a lot really. The fact that the villagers don't stand in as many places as they used to before kind of bugs me. They used to stand kind of here. Um, again, I'm assuming that's just to kind of save up space, because this game is massive. Uh, yeah, we can, we can use some honey. Uh, but the main thing with this game is that they've introduced a few new features. Uh, some of them are good, some of them are bad. And we're at the first one now. Uh, Gulliver's Ship. Uh, this is essentially what it sounds. You get Gulliver sails out on a ship in search of goods. Now, earlier when I was setting off uh, his ship... I made sure not to export them all. So you go speak to Gulliver, and he gives you three islands. So um, each island has their own little reward. So if I were to click here, uh, you can get this, this, and this. And basically, he'll return with, say, five barrels, and you are allowed to pick one barrel, and it will, you know, it will have one of these rewards in. Um, again, I still don't have Drift or Coles map, which really annoys me. So what you do, though, is you come over to the island and... Uh, Basically, any items that you don't want to use. So, in my case, it's a lot of clothing that I'm exporting currently. For example, this tiger butterfly tee. I, uh, yeah, a lot of these things are limited at time, which we'll get to. But this is the first main thing I want to focus on. So, you can export things to Gulliver, which I think is fine and dandy. And you can, again, it helps you free up inventory space, so navigation is a hell lot easier. And since I made that first video as well, they've, uh, they've done numerous crossovers. The one that I've just scrolled past here, is Splatoon, so you can get Inkling boy wigs and whatnot. Uh, it's a shame that they never have done another uh, kind of crossover, but I really hope they do continue to support this game long after, you know, New Horizons comes out, because the constant stream of new content is what keeps me coming back. And, uh, I'm trying not to export anything r rare that I know I like, so I'm getting rid of all the ugly looking stuff right now. You can export items which give you a lot more, but... Yeah. Oh, we've got Rolled's shirt, the cafe tea. Uh, I'm definitely going to get Rolled on my New Horizons island. Anyway, yeah, so you you put items on a ship, which equate to the point demand for the island, though. 
and uh, you can send him off and he returns in so many minutes. And when he returns, you can pick one thing that he returns with. So, for example, that ship we just set off, he he's going to return with three barrels. No, he's going to he can return with up to five barrels. Inside one of them will be twelve bond treats. Inside two of them will be three gold treats, and inside another two of them will be five silver treats. Originally, this just used to work as you'd give him the stuff, kind of like you would now. Uh, you'd give him ten items, he'd come back with some stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll show off the stuff. He still does come back with it. Uh, treats are the next thing they added. So you can go over to, say, Dotty and say, have a snack. And, uh, yeah, you get sweets from Gulliver. Some of them are, like, uh, kind of more appropriate to certain personality types. Uh, these ones, though, are the ones you really want to focus on. So, for example, Bronze Streets, uh, they give you so many kind of hearts, so... For example, on average, per request, you get two hearts, so this would be like doing, me doing 70 requests. So, I'm, I think I'm going to give Dottie 10 treats, just because as a test subject. And, of course, each treats have different effect, depending on the village you're giving them to, and their personality types. And, uh, yeah, if we walk now, yeah, so she's gained 30. So, uh, she's leveled up once, and uh, I do want to hit 116 for my level. That's nice. Again, this game put on a bigger screen actually Still looks like, you know, breathtaking. Uh, next thing they added, though. Uh, we're going to continue to push it on. So, call this ship. In all fairness, okay. Uh, we can we can check out Pete's delivery services, even though it isn't like, anything. But basically, say uh, Butch wants me to grab, I don't know, a pale shrub from here. But I don't want to go to Butch. So, I've done all his requests. This is his final request. I catch my pale shrub. I can just click on my map, click on Pete, find Butch, and get Pete to deliver it to him. I'll get the same kind of returns that I would doing it normally. It's kind of more efficient. To me, it's not for me. I'd rather go around and do them all. And because I have everything, I don't see a massive point in it. But if you're in a rush and you want those kind of heart points, then by all means, he's a really good way to kind of blitz through them. Um, up next, we've got Blathers. Uh, Blathers is debatably the worst feature on this, but also the best. So you get treasure maps, for, like I saw. Like you saw before. And ooh, that is really easy to unlock. So so you can get villager maps, and you have to use a certain amount of essence, uh, which relates their personality per role. And once you reach the end of the treasure map. Ooh, lucky me. Once you reach the end of the treasure map though, uh, you basically get the reward. So uh initially when this game came out, uh again that's another feature, but we'll get into that. But initially, when this game came out, you'd have to craft furniture in order to get more villagers. Uh, you can still do that now. However, I'm on the final few villagers that I can do that for. And they're all elegant. <laughs> but, so, they kind of changed how the game works. So that now, instead of having to craft a bunch of furniture, uh, you just kind of have to use these treasure maps. And for me, it's not personally for me. Yeah, they level up. 10 more leaf tickets. Always nice. Yeah, so now you just have to get to the end of these treasure maps using some essence, uh, which you get by either... No, you get you get it exclusively by leveling up villagers. Or, uh, by, if it wants to load, rolling some essence maps. So, say uh, I use preservatives, I think they are. I get 30 cute essence at the end of it. We'll, uh, we'll do one now. Uh, I know I need a lot of civic essence. I am running low on metal, though, so is the... I think we have a bunch of hip essence. We... We'll do cute essence, just because there's one of them, and it trims it down. But overall, this feature is pretty fun. It can be a pain in the ass, though, to actually complete. But in terms of getting essence and stuff, I am all for it, because normally you'd be overflowing with crafting materials in the old days of playing this game, whereas now, those crafting materials can be used to get materials you actually want by kind of using them. Hey, would you look at that? So, this is a good feature. However, it did take away the whole kind of fun side of this where you'd craft furniture to summon villagers to your campsite. I do hope they bring that back in part so that... Because again, there are so many villagers they haven't introduced into this. But... Yeah, that's Blathers' treasure trek. Uh, you can pay leaf tickets to instant clear maps and there are a lot of leaf ticket related maps here. Uh, but main reason is you're going to be doing this to unlock some new villagers. And... Ooh, that is a uh, significant amount of elegant essence. And uh, so... I'm going to show us off next, uh, the cabin. So we're going to head over to the cabin, actually. So the cabin is essentially campsite two, where you can put 
seven more villagers into, instead of a campsite, kind of a, you know, middle of the woods cabin. Uh, I should probably claim my leaf tickets before I forget to do that. <laughs> yeah, I got a whole thousand bells, that really helps my 3.3 million. But, yes, yeah, so no one wants anything here, but essentially it's the same as the campsite where, say they lose an item, you can return it to them here, or they'll ask you to do something or they'll just talk to you or give you gifts. Very same thing, it's just kind of, uh, you know, a similar thing. They did also add a second floor. You can't go up the steps, you have to specifically click that button in the top left to go upstairs. Again, that bottom floor cost in the tickets what would be at least $80. So I'm, I might go through the effort of doing it. Uh, by the way, you can't put any more up here. It's the same amount of villagers. Uh, I'll get around to decorating this. Let's go to the first one. Oh, you can use the stairs. Okay, interesting. Yeah, but that's the cabin. It's basically just a second campsite, which you can decorate with, I don't know, I suppose stuff that would look more indoors. So, as you can see, I kind of made mine into a mini little circus. Uh, I like it, though, getting to some villagers, say Maple, uh, can accidentally hit some others. Obviously, when I'm using a mouse, it's no problem. Uh, we'll give her a snack, sure. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, okay, one, one, one. We'll, we'll give her one, one gold snack. Again, I've had two villagers that I've hit maximum friendship level with. Uh, one of them with, this, with snacks, the other one was with what we're going to get into next. The one that, the additions to this game, which I really don't agree with. The DLC packs. For those of you wondering what the hell I mean, we are going to show off another thing first. So as you can see, I'm crafting some stuff to summon my last few villagers. Of course, they've had some more events and whatnot, uh, special furniture, the likes. But they also added in some more amenities. So originally, I think we had... Uh, we had natural, we had cute, we had sporty, and we had cool. That was it. And then they started adding, adding in rustic, and that brought in a whole new wave of villagers. Then they did it again with hip, then they did it with harmonious, then they did it without elegant, then modern, and then the final one they added in was historical, which was like characters like Wookie. And then they added in civic, which there are like barely any civic villagers in here anymore. But yeah, you'd have to craft their amenities, very similar to how uh, in the early days you have to craft them to allow villagers to get higher friendship level with you. It's basically the same thing. And uh, we're going to level that up, crafting complete. And as we see, the guys at my campsite have increased their liking to me. Uh, yeah, I'm still trying to get the last few of these amenities constructed. There are some seasonal, seasonal ones, like the Hello Kitty and Snow Day kind of ones. And uh, yeah, OK Motors are still fine. By the way, they haven't changed anything to that. But, basically, as I was hinting at, uh, whenever you craft something in this game now, you can still shorten the time of leaf tickets, but as you can see up here, if you choose to buy the Happy Helper plan, or the, basically, you can buy two plans in this game for a monthly fee. So, uh, this one, which I you got, I got a month-long free trial of, it is worth using the trial and then cancelling has a villager basically go and play the game for you when you don't. So they will partake in uh, new events they've added, like fishing tourneys, uh, gyrodite scavenger hunts, and flower harvesting things. They'll play the game for you, basically. And it also shortens the uh, crafting times, which kind of takes away from it, as you can see. Three pounds for one month is fine. Then there's this one where you can store more items, which I really didn't understand. Th this is a waste of money. This is viable if you're really into the game. But, yeah, so they added those in. Again, I recommend watching some of Mayor Mori's videos on them. He has a whole channel focused on Animal Crossing. For, and for a long while, it was specifically Pocket Camp content. So, I do suggest you go and check his videos on this out to see if they're for you or not. For me, I just got the month-long trial for Happy Helper Plan and bolted. Yeah, but they've also added events, like, so every month, if I were to close out here, uh, actually, no, we'll go ahead to my campsite to do this, because it's always nice in these videos, or any video that I've made, really, where I kind of go and I show something off, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's how something looks at that point in time, so I want to show off my campsite here. Uh, last time I ever changed something around was the Kix's garden thing. Oh, I forgot I had a item for Kit Kat. Kid cat, even. Yep, yeah, here you go. Yeah, it was a book. <laughs> yeah, so they added these events in shortly after launch. Yeah, as you can see, I've kind of customised mine to look more like the centre of a city or so. Nice little callback to city folk, if you ask me. In this case, if it's gonna load. 
we'll get to fortune cookies in due time. I'm going from what I like most to what I like least in our editions. Well, I kind of mess around in this. So, every month they will host a kind of monthly thing. So, if I click on the one for March, uh, you have to earn prizes by collecting a certain item. This month it's single stem bouquets. And every time you collect one, it'll get sent to your mailbox. You claim that. You come down here, you click on the little Isabel clipboard. And you collect that, and as you move along, you unlock reissue crafting material, which was basically it allows you to craft items which have returned from being limited time. Uh, leave tickets, certain things, maps, and yeah, uh, they, daily challenges have not changed since launch at all. Yeah, but this is what my campsite looks like. Yeah, I really like how this part of it looks, and uh, over here, this is also nice. Uh, again, no one wants anything to do with me. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose another thing. Some of you may be wondering, hang on, there's a garden in this game. Yeah, they host special events here where you've got to grow and catch butterflies when you grow certain types of flowers that take three hours to grow or so. And I kind of just, I'm growing tulips right now because our villagers can request cer like certain types of flowers. And yeah, they added this in. It's pretty fun if you're into hybrid things. For me, I just use it for the events, though, or growing those few types of flowers I know the villagers are going to request, if that makes sense. Uh, that's my camper, yeah. You get a special, like, just after launch camo on this, I think. Uh, it's also the same background I'm using for this video in OBS right now. Yeah, we will go and uh, do a second half of this video. Yeah, as you can see, my camper is basically dead. I do need to get more into the interior design portion of this game, which I will give it due time. But, yeah, um, that's most of the new features. There are two which I would like to show off. Uh, we can show one off now, but I'm going to specifically ignore the Happy Home Designer feature over here. And I'm going to focus on fortune cookies, mainly because I can buy some. Uh, these are essentially loot boxes, but for cute Animal Crossing items. So every so often, they'll, every day, they'll let you buy these for bells. And sometimes they'll let you buy these ones that you can buy for leaf tickets. So, for example, Bunny's Little Red Cookie for, I think, 5,000 bells each. So it's worth checking. And then anytime you buy one with leaf tickets, you get stamp cards. And you can trade in those stamps to get furniture from sets that you may not have won. Like, these are loot boxes. There is a random number generator chance as to what item you'll get out of this. So, Eloise's Flapjack Cookie, personally, is calling to me from deep within the void. Um, there are so many cookies on now. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to show this off. So you won't leave tickets as you would normally. Uh, what, what can I get with these? Because I'm interested. Ooh. Okay, how many days is this on for 60? Okay. Um, I, I'm not sure if there's going to be a specific way I can get 50 leave tickets today. So we'll, we'll order one because I'm interested in what I get. So I'll show you how it works. Also, with one of those plans you get whatever cookies you want per month but yeah there are a few exceptions for whatever reason i think it's the hello kitty ones because they can't license those anymore uh, that was a limited type promotion as well anyway yeah so you buy a fortune cookie for bells or tickets uh you open it and uh, one of your biggest dreams will come true right and you get a nice little item like this so personally this is the item i wanted and i might pop this down at my campsite now and yeah, I got a little stamp on my stamp card. Uh, so that's fortune cookies. A lot of people are against them. For me, it's those things where if you save, you can save up those leaf tickets from leveling up or from your daily walking bonuses. And eventually, it doesn't even become so much a loot box than it does. Okay, I'm just going to put some leaf tickets into this. Like, the chance of you spending real money on this game is low. I have spent zero pounds on this and I am level 116 with 3.3 million bells. Uh... Talking about that, I have my anniversary outfit on. Uh, yeah, I've changed clothes a lot. I became a little circus ringleader to celebrate me getting all the items I needed for my cabin. Uh, but I might as well show this off now, but I doubt I have the things to do it. Actually, no, I might have items to do this. The Happy Home Academy. You come here, you craft items, and then you put them down in certain locations in the building to get a score. Uh, are there any of these I can complete? Any at all? See, this is why Gulliver's thing exists. So, here we go. Uh, we'll retake this class. Because I have some of the items that I haven't shipped off yet. So, every day you go in. Or, whenever you want. You get three free tries per day. See, you can do three rooms per day, basically. 
And uh, so let's say Apple wants a home decorated. Uh, so they'll give you the items you got to craft. Sometimes they won't and you've got to guess what goes best with the room. So we can put down that polka dot table. Uh, she wants a mush kind of thing that goes there. I don't have that. So instead I'm going to get her some jugglers clubs. Because again that kind of goes with the theme of the room. Polka dot low table goes there and polka dot closet there. I'm satisfied with that layout. And yeah you get a rating at the end. And the more you level up the more rewards you get. It, it's pretty fun. Like I said, this is kind of why they phased out crafting items for villagers, uh, for getting villagers with maps, if that makes sense. Ooh, jeez, okay. I made the room better than what it could have possibly been. <laughs> High score was 312, okay. I passed though. Uh, yeah, they give you a few points. Uh, there we go. Class passed reward. You know, this item was the key. And yeah, uh, that's how this works. The more event items where, for example, uh, we could do Tom Nooks, actually, if we so desired. Uh, so we got Island Excursion 1. Uh, this one's tied to a fortune cookie, so if you're very much into a fortune cookie, then you can, you know, do these to get a little bit extra rewards out of what you are spending your money on. It's got that very much Nintendo trail where if you spend money, they're going to make sure 100,000% that you're getting your money's worth in this game. So you don't just get an item, you get something you can use in this as well, so... I mean, we might as well help Tom look on his island excursion. And, uh, yeah, we'll try this out before we get into the second half of this video. I might split it up, but, yeah, so he'll be thinking about what you, he wants in each area. Uh, right, what does he want here? Some logs? Right, uh, we'll put a lantern there. Just because it kind of fits in with the whole theme. Also, that radio plays the New Horizons theme. I want it. Badly. Okay. Yeah, but I'm going to come back in around an hour once my villagers have kind of reset their daily tasks. And more specifically, Tom Nook has reset the fish at the beach. Because, uh, again, every three hours some more fish will appear at the beach that I can catch. Uh, yeah, so I, I got two out of the three medals there. Just because I didn't have all the items. Or any item that specifically would fit the goal, fit the gap or purpose of what he was looking for. And yeah... Like, you get this essence as well, which is useful for crafting certain things. This item was the key, portable radio. Do I have the portable radio? I do. Uh, we could put that down somewhere at my campsite. But that, that's that. Personally, I like that. It kind of gives a purpose to crafting in this game. Uh, if you look at all these different in things, they all link together. So uh, those special events give you items that you can use in the Happy Home Academy. And then you craft things for the Happy Home Academy, and you can give them off to Gorva. And the fortune cookies can be used to decorate your thing, uh, get memories, which are like small. I think I have one that I can show off. Uh, yes, yeah, so you click on the scrapbook, it shows a bunch of memories. We have got to find the one related to Kid. It's not. It wasn't Kid Cat, was it? I think no, it was Bob's. Bob's Circus Cookie. There we are. Bob's back under the big top. So whenever you get a five star item out of the fortune cookie, you will. Uh, you'll get to see one of these memories. Uh, there are there is a stretch goal of at least seeing one of these. Uh, okay, don't crash on me, emulator. Knox, please. Yes, sir. yeah. So he, you can kind of click through this. It's a nice little uh, thing. You can kind of pause and read this. Again, it goes on for a while. And uh, yeah, the, the nice little wholesome things, which you know, like I say, if you're spending money on this game, you are definitely getting your bang for your buck. A lot of people complain, and I mean a lot of people complain about this game not being fun or having too many pay to win gimmicks, but to me, nah, this is just a fun little Nintendo game to take you over until New Horizons, or to play in those 5-10 extra minutes you have. Yeah. Yep. Nah. Oh. Yes, there's little stories to each of them. I think in one of them they try to ro launch a rocket. I think that was Philbert. Anyway. So, I think at the end they open a circus if I'm right. I've only seen this once. Yeah. Yeah, so it's nice little scenes like this. Yeah, with this new toot, Bob gets to perform at the Three Ring Circus with his closest pals. And, yeah. Like I said, I was over the moon when I got the five star item for that. Like, set. Like I said, it's, it's all proudly displayed in my cabin. But yeah, that's going to wrap it up for part one. Uh, yeah, like I said, that's right. Part one, bitches. 
Uh, this is going to be split into two videos. Uh, this is kind of replacing the Guitar Hero video because I'm still stuck on the raining board. And, you know, therefore I can't finish the game for you all. So, this is going to be a two-part video. Uh, part two is going to be shot later today. Keep an eye out. It might come out on the same day because I am one day behind on uploads. Uh, just saying. But, uh, yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up. Uh, so we definitely, uh... Well, yeah, I definitely like this game. I've shown off all the new features, and at least most of them. So the next part is kind of going to be me going around, kind of reminiscing on... Like I said, I've given my opinion on the new features, but I want to give my opinion on the game as a whole in the next part. So stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, you know, with all that said all aside, I hope you stick around for part two. And yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. My name's been Remick, and peace out for about 50 minutes. <laughs>